Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. My purpose is to help you get free from the emotional baggage that weighs you down so that you can be fully alive and engaged in life. My media includes audiobooks, self-help books, videos, and this podcast. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome everyone. Here is some feedback from a listener. Hello, my name is Carl. Uh, I'm a 50 year old male. And uh, I guess the piece of baggage that uh, has become at least much more clear recently has been the connection between anxious attachment and the Holy Spirit, which none of the attachment literature talks about. Uh, and uh, you have had one podcast that really brought those together. That was per- pretty much a revelation to me about uh, what was going inside of me. Uh, and so is it fixed yet? Nah, probably not. But I very much appreciate you bringing those two uh, ideas together, which I don't think anybody else has. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, for leaving me that voicemail on how this podcast is helping you make progress on your baggage. I invite all of my listeners to leave me a similar voicemail. Follow the link in the show notes. Do childhood experiences matter if you've forgiven the people involved and you're not thinking about it anymore? I'm going to address that in today's episode of Life Without Baggage. In our last episode, I interviewed Julie Raboa, who shared in a lot of personal detail about what it was like growing up with a person who had an undiagnosed mental illness, a personality disorder. So even though we can't really diagnose family, there are quizzes that you can take to help you understand the types of challenges you went through And it can help you understand sensitivities. For example, Julie shared that because of going through poverty, her parents divorcing, a very angry mom, that those types of experiences can influence how well we function psychologically, how well we function physically, our health, even into adulthood. So I'm going to talk about a quiz called the ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences. You can find it online pretty easily. I got it from the American Society for the Positive Care of Children, but I think there's lots of places online where you can take the quiz. And the reason that I'm doing this is because many people lack compassion for themselves in terms of what they're struggling with and why it's so hard to change. And also they may not really know what to do about it. So as Julie mentioned in our last episode, if you haven't heard it, I'm going to reference her from time to time as I talk about this. But she shared how the impact of an angry, controlling mom for her was she became excessively people-pleasing And she lost her own sense of self, which easily happens, even in adulthood when we allow another person to control us or the needs of other people to control us for long periods of time. We can start to lose touch with our authentic self that God created us to be. So let me give you a couple of examples of other things that people may notice if they've had an excess of adverse childhood experiences, or if they just haven't worked through some of those things sufficiently yet. So as I mentioned, Julie talked extensively about her struggles with people-pleasing, that that is one possible uh, 
in, that is one of the possible impacts because your coping is probably going to be affected. You're going to need to, to develop survival skills that if you need them too often, they become ingrained in how you approach life. And anything that is too ingrained, that's too rigid, that isn't able to flex and bend with new challenges or new difficulties, that it can prevent us from really thriving in any chapter of life. So some other common difficulties are there because of the amount of cortisol in the body, there can be some sensitivities to health issues and there's lots of research that stress impacts our physical functioning. You're not uh, doomed to these things, but there's probably some impact and you may already know what it is. Some other things are just sensitivities to irritability, some irrational levels of fear, maybe of things happening to one of your children. I see that one a lot with people who went through traumatic experiences as a child, they are obsessed with the safety of their child. Now we should take steps to protect our children and we should be aware of who they're with, but I'm talking about an ir irrational, unrelenting level of fear. Also, I've talked a lot in different interviews about learned helplessness. Learned helplessness isn't a diagnosis, but it's a passive approach to life where we stop trying to exert any control and have sort of taken the attitude of, well, what's the use? So you can see without developing full-blown PTSD, there can be a variety of difficulties with depression, with anxiety, with a lack of self-care where you're rescuing other people all the time and not taking out the time that you need for your own mental health, your own spiritual health, your own physical health. And I just want to make a comment too that I'm really not a fan, believe it or not, of dredging and digging up the past. However, some of these things, if you're trying to take reasonable steps and certain things aren't moving. That's where we need to take a look at where did this problem come from? What's the root of it? So that we can address it at the root and then keep going. Like a, a small example of this is there was a period a, a few years ago where I just didn't quite feel right and I didn't know what it was. So I did make an appointment with the doctor and they determined after doing some blood work that my vitamin D was low. That's a small example of you just find out how much vitamin D do you need? What do I need to do to increase the amount of vitamin D in my system? So that was sort of a simple fix. So if we know what is wrong, we can do something about it. It's not the idea that we want to live in the in the uh, victim mentality or uh, just throw up our hands and say we're doomed. It's so we can take a few steps to move a little farther forward so that we're not limited unduly by the things in our past or tendencies in our personality. So I'm going to read the quiz questions. There are 10 of them. And this doesn't cover everything that can happen to a person. These are more of things that would happen in the home. And there are 10 questions and they're yes or no. And the higher your score is, the more likely you're going to have some kind of health problem or trouble with depression or anxiety. So here are the questions. Did a parent or other adult in the household often or very often swear at you? insult you, put you down, or humiliate you, or act in a way that made you afraid that you might be hurt physically? Number two, did a parent or other adult in the household often or very often push, grab, slap, or throw something at you, or ever hit you so hard that you had marks on you? Number three, did an adult or person at least five years older than you ever touch or fondle you, 
or have you touched their body in a sexual way or attempt or actually have some type of intercourse with you? Number four, did you often or very often feel that no one in your family loved you or thought you were important or special? Or your family didn't look out for each other, feel close to each other, or support each other? These are tough questions, aren't they? And they, you may be feeling emotion even as you answer them. And to the degree that you are feeling sadness or anger or um, hopelessness or anxiety, then that means probably that area is not quite healed yet. The next question, number five, did you often or very often feel that you didn't have enough to eat? or had to wear dirty clothes and had no one to protect you, or your parents were too drunk or high to take care of you, or take you to the doctor if you needed it. That's about neglect, isn't it? Those are all forms of neglect. Number six, were your parents ever separated or divorced? Number seven, was your parent or caregiver often or very often pushed, grabbed, slapped, or had something thrown at him or her? This is where you're witnessing violence. Sometimes, often, or very often, kicked, bitten, hit with a fist, or hit with something hard, or ever repeatedly hit over at least a few minutes, or threatened with a weapon. So witnessing violence to a sibling or a parent is also extremely stressful. Number eight, did you live with anyone who was a problem drinker or an alcoholic or who used street drugs? And I'm going to add or prescription drugs excessively. Some people are able to get the prescriptions, but it's clear it's, it's interfering with them functioning. Number nine, was a household member depressed or mentally ill? Or did a household member attempt suicide? Remember in Julie's story, her mom had an undiagnosed um, mental illness, it, Sounds like it was a personality disorder. Number 10, did a household member go to prison? This is extremely stressful too. You're losing someone that you love. So those are the 10 questions. The way this is scored is again, one point for every time you answered yes. And the higher the score is, the higher you are at a risk for some kind of a physical problem or um, emotional challenge, anxiety, depression, that passive kind of helplessness, uh, being stuck in one mode of being, always rescuing, things like that. So I want to leave you with some hope. We aren't doomed to struggle the rest of our lives with things. There are steps we can take to help ourselves. So if you've become aware of something that you weren't quite aware of before this episode, think about what you can do one step to help yourself. Now, the tendency with some people is to want to address everything spiritually. And we've talked about the fact that we are designed spirit, our spiritual life, our soul, which is how we think, our emotions, our ability to engage our will, our relationships, and our body. Sometimes there's things we have to do to take care of our body. So some steps you can take is, do you have adequate supports? Maybe you want to get into a support group for a period of time to work through some of these issues. Maybe you want to talk to a pastor or even see a therapist professionally. There's a lot of opportunities even online if it's hard for you to get out of the house. There are services that are just online that you can use. And of course, you can keep sinking your roots into your walk with the Lord for more peace, more wisdom, to transform your mind by reading his word, but also, you know, I've talked a lot about how do you talk to yourself? Is there a lot of self-rejection? Is there a lot of self-criticism? Those are things that the Bible would say you need to take every thought captive. So you want to address that as well. So these are some ideas that can help you understand yourself 
help you understand why you might be stuck in one way of doing things and repeating a mistake over and over, and a few practical ideas on how to move forward. So I would encourage you to check out my other episodes. I have tons of things on boundaries, on changing your self-talk, changing your self-criticism, and just increasing your understanding of yourself. So let me pray a blessing for you as we close. Lord, I thank you for this listener and the fact that you desire each of us to be free, spirit, soul, and body, to walk in the fullness of joy that you designed us to enjoy. So I pray that you would guide this person one thing they can do for themselves to continue to move forward into a place of freedom, peace, and joy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, share it with a friend. Talk to you next time.